afternoon. Uh, can you guys hear me on the phone? Yeah. Hi, Josh. Hi, man. How are you doing? Hanging in there. Hanging in there sounds about right. All right, let me uh, kick us off here on <laughs> Facebook, and I apologize, Josh, that we don't have, we haven't uh, gotten the technology up to do the to the two of us on Facebook at nope. the same time. It's been a frustrating. We've been trying. We don't know why it's not working. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, That's okay. I saw uh, t- Tuesday when you had uh, Chief Graziano on, so no problem at all. Yeah, well, and I, for a couple of times here, I held the computer in my on my shoulder, but it, yeah, I don't know that it worked that well. So I thought we'd just go on the phone today and then have you back on maybe once we finally figure figure this out. Um, so let me just uh, kick us off here. Uh, today is Friday, May 15th. It is uh, supposed to be nice out today, which is great. And uh, unfortunately, our uh, pandemic continues. We're... Um, we're still we're still seeing numbers in Lackawanna County that we don't love. We're still seeing people, unfortunately, succumbing to this virus, this COVID nineteen virus. the The number of cases are going up. We know, and we need to take these things into context. The number of cases are going up in part because testing has gone up, which is really really good news. Uh, it's good news that there's more testing out there. It's good news that that we're seeing um, a maybe starting to see a bit of a pattern of, of fewer deaths, but we're not, we're not out of the woods yet. And we're still um, far from the uh, number of new cases that, that we require under the governor's order to go into that next yellow phase. So I know it's, it's a really hard time. It's confusing out there because some of the, the counties around us uh, might be going into yellow phase soon. We're not there yet. We're certainly hoping that we can, can be there soon and start to, Open, open up our businesses again, open up our community again. And uh, knowing though that opening means opening in a new normal, opening and continuing to do everything that we've been doing for months now, wearing the masks being very important, continuing to wash our hands, uh, not just a couple times a day, but throughout the day, washing them, singing happy birthday twice, using that hand sanitizer, uh, not, use, not going into stores that are packed, having the stores have spacing, um, when we talk about restaurants, and we'll talk with Josh about this, uh, figuring out how, how we can safely get back to those, those social activities that we love, get back to the food that we love and miss so much, uh, have our small businesses be, be back and running um, in the way that, that we hope they can be soon. So we're still, we're still very much in this in that way, but I, I'm hoping that, that soon we can start to really be, be opening and figuring out how we can live with COVID. That's part of the the issue here is COVID's not probably going away. It's probably going to be with us uh, for a while. And, you know, a vaccine isn't going to be coming anytime soon. What we can do can hope is that there's new uh, levels continuing to be higher levels of, of testing and tracing and that we are able to have these measures in place where we have social distancing. We're not having a lot of community spread and the virus while still a threat is, is not a, a, a red threat, a red alert level of threat that it is right now. So it seems like we're making progress, but I know it's still really hard out there. It's hard on everybody who's still at home. Here's another summer, it feels like a summer Friday night that we should all be out out on the town and, and seeing each other and, and clinking our glasses and eating all that delicious food that we love in Scranton. So I, I know this is hard and um, we'll, we'll keep talking about this a little bit later on, but I'm very excited today to have Josh Mass, who um, owns Posh, and he is on today. Uh, Josh and I have known each other for a while now. And I, Josh, is, Josh uh, and Paul, his partner, have had seen some ups and downs with the, these, the closure and, and the different phases of COVID. So I thought it'd be interesting to hear from Josh how, what it's been like to be a small business owner at this time. What's it like to be especially uh, a, a restaurant owner, the owner of uh, a venue with, you know, with Posh is a venue that I've been to many, many times for many, many events. Uh, it's certainly a business that has been impacted in, in both ways, both on the restaurant bar side, but then also in terms of being an event space. So Josh, we've talked on our town halls a lot about um, what what options have been there for businesses on the program level, but talking to you is kind of the first time that we're hearing us maybe a story of what, what it's been like during this time. And so I, I wrote down some bullet points, um, but you know, really at this point, um, 
you know, one of the things that was speaking with some local restaurateurs, bar owners, some local businesses, the most important thing that I can just say to everyone is support your local business, whether they're doing curbside, whether they're doing takeout, whether they're doing shop online videos. Um, you know, the big box retailers, as we all know, will be there at the end of this. Um, you know, our small businesses are what make our downtown, and they really are what make downtown Scranton is if you think of, you know, the different businesses that are in our downtown, whether it's retail, restaurants, um, social things, um, you know, so really at this time, whatever you can do on your level, um, also, you know, ask your friends to support them. You know, if you like one restaurant for lunch or dinner, but they don't serve lunch and dinner, okay, well, where's another one that does? Um, you know, and uh, speaking with, uh, you know, a, a co-business owner downtown, a bar and restaurant or um, you know, what we said is, you know, now we've all kind of switched to the same business model. So, you know, we're doing curbside um, takeout. We're doing delivery at Posh Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 4 to 8 o'clock. Um, but also there's a lot of other restaurants doing that that did not do that before. So now, you know, where we, I always have said, and I still say this, you know, I just want businesses to be open when people say, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to go downtown Scranton tonight because that means there's a ton of stuff to do. Yeah. Um, you know, so now is not to think of, okay, well, where did I normal where did I normally get delivery from? Oh my goodness, there's so many more options for delivery and curbside. So, you know, expand your horizons a little bit, um, but also realize that maybe the place that you've never thought of for curbside and delivery is doing it now. Um, you know, we just found out last night we can serve cocktails. So uh, we served three cocktails last night. Um, I put it up on social media. I think it's good. So that we are selling cocktails now, curbside. Um, never in my wildest dreams would I thought that CPA LCD would have uh, allowed us to do that. So you know, we are just trying to um, you know change our business model. Unfortunately, or I shouldn't say change, adapt it as fast as we can. Um, one, just financially. Um, you know, unfortunately, having two properties in the downtown uh, with you know, staff at both of them, um, you know, we want to keep our staff, take care of them. We want to, you know, from a customer standpoint, take care of our customers. So again, you know, everybody is wearing a mask, everybody's wearing gloves. Um, you know, we're washing our hands, like we said, all the time. Uh, we've got sterilization stations uh, set up, you know, when people are coming to Posh to pick up, we're asking them to stay in their car, we'll get their name, we'll go in, we'll get the order, we'll bring it out to them. You know, but some of them, they don't want to do that, right? They want to see us. Um, so, you know, we, as long as we're social distancing, you know, we're okay with that also. Um, but, you know, we're trying to, you know, we've got a limited menu as a lot of curbside and delivery restaurants are doing now. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of from a restaurant standpoint. Um, you know, we don't know what the other side looks like. From, you know, an event side, as you mentioned, you know, like the Colonnade and Posh, we do private events. Pretty much all weddings um, have moved to next year. Um, and I have to say, that's what I've been asking and telling bride and grooms to do. Yeah. You know, we just don't know what it looks like until um, there is a vaccine. Um, you know, do you want to make the choice of I'm going to only invite 50 people or I'm going to invite the 125 that I had originally planned on? What are my wedding pictures going to look like? Um, <laughs> so, you know, those are the, but the things from a restaurant side is we just don't know um, really what is going, what we're going to have to enforce is it disposables? Is it wearing plastic gloves when we serve people? Is it can't we, can we not do food stations anymore? Is it yeah. just served entrees? Um, you know, and those are kind of the, the things that every day as a business owner and working with my customers, they're asking us and you know, I have to just kind of say, hey, we don't know, but whatever the law is, that's what we're going to follow yeah. because, you know, we want to protect them and our employees at the same time. Yeah. Well, I think that's what's important that we talk on these town halls about this as a community conversation. And what's helpful about being a smaller community like ours is that we can take our conversations and our recommendations from people like you who own these businesses and try to, to sort that out, go to the governor's office and say, all right, as we look to these next phases, here's the ideas from our community are these things that we could implement. So I, I think this is this is certainly, in my view, this whole thing, you know, nobody has the answers. This is a two-way street where in the, in the initial couple of months, obviously, this has been and needs to continue to be a, a medical and, and science-driven approach in terms of public health. As we hopefully start to see numbers of cases and deaths go down, then that it makes it this two-way street where businesses are 
are saying, hey, this, these are the things that we see as solutions. This is how we think we can safely reopen is, are these things that we can do. So I, I want to take, you know, your thoughts and get those, get those to the, the governor's office to see if that those are things that we can implement. When we talk about some of these things, you know, it'll maybe be a top down, but there are a lot of approaches. You guys are the business owners. You guys are the ones who know what your operations are like, you know, what's possible. And I, I you know, we're going to have to continue to follow the rules, but let's try to have a conversation about what those rules look like on an ongoing basis, because we all know that the, the rules as we go forward into a new normal have to work for business owners, right? It has to be something you can actually implement. And so what, what those ideas are. So I, I hadn't even thought about like thinking about an event past, you know, plated versus um, kind of buffet style. Uh, that's, that's something I hadn't even thought yeah. about. And how, what do you do there? Um, how does that impact, you know, how does that impact your business? How does that impact the businesses for a lot of different other um, types of venues? Uh, and then all of, you know, thinking through all of the, the, the lost revenues for this year for a business like yours and others. I know we've talked to people that, uh, you know, in the wedding business, there's so many, there's so many people that have, you know, they've missed Mother's Day, they've missed um, weddings, they've missed graduation so far. It's going to be really tough for everyone. So when I think about solutions, you know, it's not just, okay, the PPP came out through the federal government. That's not enough. We have to figure, we have to figure out how to continue to support you all as you go through um, the coming months and the coming year. And in the same way that, that we have to, for the government side, I just we put out a letter yesterday with the 15 mayors of the largest cities in Pennsylvania asking the federal government for relief here. We're asking for a similar thing that I think businesses need. So what, what are some of those other things that you're, you and Paul are thinking about of how you adapt your business going forward? What do you think, let's say, let's say you're able to have seating again in a couple of weeks or, or a month or two. What, what do you think that some of those things that you're thinking about are? Yeah, so, you know, a couple of things. It's, it's interesting because about a year ago, uh, or actually two years ago, we got our permit for um, sidewalk dining. Um, and so I wanted to do the parking lot at the same time. And Paul was like, oh, no, we're no, going to sit in our parking lot, like whatever. So, you know, we're thinking of if we can to convert possibly our parking lot to some outside dining. I know um, as my as my Scranton Tomorrow had, um, you know, we've spoken about possibly trying to get um, parking spots or if there's some streets that maybe can be closed down at different hours so that restaurants can expand out there. I and mean, I know that that's only a temporary thing because we are in Northeast PA, but, you know, we have that first nice day today. So, um, you know, instead of um, you know, people being like, oh, I've got to sit inside and I've watched these videos. Okay, can we do outside? Um, you know, Posh, a lot of times people think of us as more upscale restaurant, you know, that takes it down a couple notches to be like, okay, come go get a five napkin burger, yeah. get some good appetizers. Um, you know, so it's really like taking what we're doing, um, you know, and how can we expand our restaurant or our footprint um, to make it still a fun and an experience, but maybe we've changed what that experience is. And, you know, can we use the parking lot? Can we use our sidewalk better? You know, um, how can we, you know, have an outdoor space? And I think that that's something that could be great really for downtown yeah. is, you know, letting bars, restaurants expand as much as they can. Of course, there is the LCB question in there. Um, so I, that's one of the things that I've been trying to work on. Um, but again, any help on the LCB side, you know, any help on retrofitting, um, because again, you know, we've had a lot of lost revenue, so I can't just go out and buy the great tables yeah. and chairs and outdoor yeah. seating that I would love to have. Um, so again, any help on that avenue, whether it's, you know, I've talked to a couple of event people, can we rent stuff um, mm -hmm. so that I don't have to go out and buy it? Yeah. Um, you know, any type of business to business communication, um, you know, okay, this business on my same block is doing this. Well, it doesn't make sense for us to both do the same thing. Um, right. So again, you know, what is, you know, in downtown, what is, Posh doing, what is Backyard, what is AV, what is Pizza by Papa, you know, what yeah. is Barpazo doing, so that, again, we can also promote that as you can still come downtown. These are still things to do. And then, you know, on a, a, a retail side, I think we really have to try to get our retailers to realize that, okay, people are probably hopefully going to come down to eat and drink. So can we be open Thursdays and Friday yeah. nights? And can they do the same thing? Can they move their shops? Outside, again, I know we don't always have the best weather, but to me, that's possibly a way that we can at least feel good about what we're doing and, you know, um, you know maybe even get some national news buzz, like, hey, 
look what Scranton is doing. Like they took this and it either is working or it doesn't work, but you know, to try um, something uh, for events, we are, you know, we just, we really don't know um, on the event side, you know, we are hoping to figure out how many people we can have. So, you know, on a one side, it's great because we do have the two ballrooms on the second floor at Posh Colonnade. We have several rooms, we have the outdoor space. So, you know, how can we make that work for people? Mm-hmm. But again, if we were having four day we may be down to one event a day right right yeah which is, uh-huh. a, which is a huge a, a huge hit and that's that's where we need longer term on the on the financial aid piece we need that those types of programs from washington and we're trying we're trying to do something local here too um that's that need is not going away with the stay-at-home order right uh but on the adapt adaptation piece uh, we are working here at the city, the permitting licensing, our um, PD, FD, we're all, we're all looking at how we can do exactly what you just mentioned. How can we safely close down some streets uh, in the evenings this summer and make sure that, you know, obviously have to continue to have emergency services have access to the, the right roads and all of that. But we're looking at that to be able to do just what you said. How can we expand, um, basically expand the footprint of all of our businesses downtown, not just food, but also the retail so that people can be outside. They can uh, enjoy the uh, different restaurants and, and retail outlets, not just in the downtown, but even in the neighborhoods too. Uh, can we open up, open up and allow, and we're planning to allow uh, the, any any of the businesses that can to use that that sidewalk area to be able to put some extra tables and chairs out there so that they can open uh, safely and still have some some customers. I think it would be I think it'll be great. I've seen some amazing videos and pictures from other cities, like Seattle, Cincinnati, different places that have closed down some streets, and it's it's great for the businesses because they can open up and you know it's not lost on me. Believe me that it still isn't at the capacity that that most restaurants, any restaurant would usually have. But at least it, it can help, and if mentally for our own health, I know I can't wait to to go out to dinner. I can't wait to go back downtown, and and I would love if you guys opened up that parking lot for for um, for dinners uh, because that cuts right out my side my office window at City Hall. So I would love to look out, and ins- instead of seeing cars, I would love to see people enjoying your delicious food. <laughs> so. But even like if there's, you know, I'm just thinking there's a way that there's extra picnic tables that are at any of the parks or at you know, the swimming pools mm-hmm. that aren't going to be open. Like, can we get those picnic tables brought downstairs, mm-hmm. downtown or to the neighborhood, socially distance them so that, again, to help with, okay, oh, we've already got some picnic tables. That's one less thing you've got to worry about buying. Right. Exactly. Because that's, that's what I've been thinking, too. How do you, are there programs out there maybe, too, that we can help you guys find? Are there ways that you guys would get, could, you as business owners maybe could get reimbursed for COVID related purchases, or maybe there's, you know, maybe there are outlets that are willing to donate those types of things for this type of reason. I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll, we want to work with you to look for some of those things. And it is hard. How do you say, okay, my revenues have plummeted and I need to now go buy infrastructure. I know how expensive those outdoor items can be. So we'll try to find some solutions there, but we are, we're working on, again, licensing, permitting, we're in touch with the liquor control board as well um, to try to see what we can do to loosen restrictions um, as much as possible, as safely as possible, of course, to make sure that we're able to bring people back down, not only to the downtown, but to the neighborhoods and have people start to enjoy their lives again. Uh, that's what's, that's what this is. It's not just about small business. It's about people you know, mental health, physical health, getting out and walking a little bit, getting out of the house, being able to breathe a little. So uh, that's, that's so, it's so important. And it really, we, we just can't go through the summer uh, cooped up in our houses. So I don't think we'll have to, I think we'll have to ad- adapt and socially, we have to adapt, you have to adapt your business, we have to adapt socially. Uh, no, you know, we won't, won't be shaking hands, won't be giving big hugs, uh, which is unfortunate, but wearing the masks, making masks cool, I think is one of the big things, right? Uh, we're going to make those masks cool. Yeah. And uh, I, I know there's a lot of pressure on all the business owners out there. It's really hard to ask everyone to make all these adaptations and buy all this PPP and PPE and buy all these different things to have, you know, social distancing in your, in your outlets. That's, that's really hard. There's a lot of pressure on you all. And we at the city, we appreciate that. And we want to, we want to continue the dialogue. So we're doing, we're, 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 making things happen for you, not at you. Does that make sense? These to be things that are helpful, yeah. not, think, not, you know, I don't want to be like, Oh, Hey, you know, Josh, congratulations. We did this. And you say like, that's, 
great, but that doesn't help me, right? We don't want, we don't want, we, we, we don't want this to be a top-down approach, like I said. So um, is there anything else that you think would be helpful for folks out there uh, in terms of either business owners or consumers? Are there things that, that you guys are seeing curbside behaviors that you recommend maybe for people, things that help you help you be able to get that curbside to work better for your customers? Um, I mean, really for us, our customers have been really great with curbside. You know, most of them are wearing masks when they show up. We're wearing masks. Um, you know, we put it in the back seat of their car or their trunk. Um, you know, what I, uh, what several people are doing, which is really nice, is, you know, they're getting their friends and they're all ordering together and then they're delivering it for their friends in the neighborhood That's or, nice. you know, instead of having five cars lined up for five different orders, you know, somebody's picking up five orders at a time, which is also great for the kitchen, yeah. um, you know, on a restaurant side, again, it's based on quantity. Um, you know, we're also always about quality and service, but again, the more orders, um, you know, that we can get in a night um, and, you know, because we're working at a limited time and a limited, um, menu you know it's easier for the guys to you know crank out 10 burgers at a time versus one here one there so yeah. again if you can get your friends together or pick up deliver for them you know we're offering delivery service also but again um you know also anybody who calls and orders the day up before that is so nice to walk out of the restaurant and be like like tonight i've got four orders already that i know when i come in that people have to be called in order so that it makes you feel good so and then also just a thank you um, honestly means the world to anyone right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that is really, really good. I hadn't thought about that in terms of the kind of bulk ordering. That's a great, that is great. And then you basically, if, if you can be the, also, and that cuts down on the number of people that have to leave their house. Um, so that's a yeah. fantastic idea to pull your, pull your neighbors and say, you know, Hey, who wants to order from this restaurant tonight? And, or tomorrow night, rather, even putting those those orders in ahead. That's great. I think that's a really good thing that we can all do. And hopefully going into the weekend, you'll see uh, maybe from the town hall, maybe some more bulk orders. That's a great, a great thing. And yeah, to echo what you said, uh, it's really like we're doing with all of this, like we're doing talking about going to the parks, talking about going downtown, please wear masks, please wear um, please wear those masks to help other people feel more comfortable around you. So especially you think about, you know, the people that are taking that, the employees from these restaurants who are taking that out to you, they're going to feel more comfortable if you're wearing a mask too. So it's just, it's a, it's a courtesy and a respect thing to do that for each other. So we want to continue to do that. Um, Josh, it's always wonderful to talk to you and I'm excited to hopefully get Likewise. you guys some, um, some extra help in terms of adapting your business and the other ones. And on the liquor control board side, if you um, want to, to check in with our office and see where we can be helpful, we can certainly, uh, we, we've opened that dialogue about this. So we're taking all the suggestions that you have. Great. Thank you very much. Um, and again, a pleasure to be on anything you need. You know, I'm always happy to help. Thank you. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Josh. All right, I hadn't thought about that. That's really cool to pull those orders to help the small businesses operate um, and be able to get those orders out. As you can imagine, these all these businesses are adapting and this is new to them. So anything that you can do to help support them, but also do it in a way that makes it, it work for their employees and their operations is great. So um, that's exciting. And to kind of complete that, we're looking at those, looking at what we can do and we're hoping to roll something out soon. Uh, to be able to open up some of those streets, excuse me, I have to see. <laughs> um, looking to be able to open open the, the some of those streets and have uh, have a fun summer despite um, the social distancing that we know that we're going to continue to have to do. I wanted to say that we are continuing to advocate for funding for cities directly to the congressional delegation to the federal government. Uh, we are still, you know, still for many months bef ahead of us that we're look looking at the revenues and trying to see what what it's going to look like for us here in the city. Uh, I know all our, all mayors are doing that and trying to, to sort out what does our budget look like, where are the gaps, where are the holes, what are we going to have to do to make this work for us in 2020 and 2021. We need fiscal relief from Washington to help us do that. And I signed on to a letter with the other uh, 14 mayors of the 14 largest cities in Pennsylvania coming together really as a, a mayor's alliance to 
advocate for that funding, advocate for that funding to go directly to the cities so that we're not um, kind of fighting for it at the state level. That um, seems like a, to me, like a layer of, of red tape that, that we don't need and we don't have time for. So we're continuing to advocate for that funding. It's really important to me uh, to advocate for that funding for all of you. Uh, it also, that effort also makes me think of the census because in a similar way, the filling out the census is a way that you can basically put your voice in, raise your hand and say, hey, I'm here to make sure that we get federal funding that, that would be there for us uh, anyway, but that would be there for us for the next 10 years. So uh, my 20 cents, my 2020 census.gov is um, only takes five, 10 minutes. Every household should do it. It's very, very, very important that we count everyone. I think we're only a little over 50% at this point, which is not good. We really need to see those numbers go up. We're in a situation where the, the usual census takers that knock on your door can't go knock on those doors right now. So please uh, answer the census and tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell your family members to get those numbers in. Make sure that we're getting those federal dollars like we, like we need. On the COVID symptoms and testing front, so we're still at a point where uh, the Department of Health isn't testing for people without symptoms. So you still uh, need to call 1-877-PA-HEALTH to give your symptoms over the phone and get a test. That test might be done at, uh, up at the Geisinger or Moses here in Scranton or maybe at the Mohegan Sun Arena. The Geisinger line, you can call them directly as well. It's 284-3657. That's another uh, means to get a test. Again, those are symptoms. You have to have symptoms. And I know it's really frustrating that we haven't seen expanded testing. There is no symptoms testing at Rite Aid in Plains Township and in East Troutsburg. I know that's not even in Lackawanna County. I know that that's not uh, exactly what you want to hear, but it is available and that's great. And we appreciate Rite Aid doing that. So if you're able to get down to, if you're worried that you have COVID or that you've been around somebody who has, go ahead and go or call. Sorry, you have to register for Rite Aid. Um, you pre-register at RiteAid.com and then that location at 20 South River Street in Plains or 128 North Cortland Street in East Stroudsburg. Okay, so some new information here. The Lake Scranton Urgent Care at 1141 Mosick Street is doing antibody testing. This is new to me. So Lake Scranton Urgent Care on Mosick Street doing antibody testing. If you have had symptoms in the past or been in contact with somebody who had COVID-19, you do not need an appointment and it's available for anyone over the age of five. This is not for people who currently have symptoms. So not if you currently have symptoms, if you think that you've been in contact with somebody or have had symptoms in the past, Lake Scranton Urgent Care, 1141 Mosick Street. Okay, another new announcement, which is exciting. So Governor Wolf announced yesterday that there is a new civilian coronavirus corps the, it is to hire and train Pennsylvanians to ramp up contact tracing. So this is something we've been waiting for. This is great news from Harrisburg. It's a broad program to train workers to test for COVID-19 and conduct contact tracing to monitor infection rates. And hopefully we will simultaneously reduce unemployment by being able to you know, ramp up and ramp back into normal life soon more soon, uh, sooner. <laughs> so um, this is very exciting. It's a process where you can register to, um, to be a part of the civilian corps. So you go to servepa.gov, it's S-E-R-V, S-E-R-V dot P-A dot gov. You can register, you'll be asked to join the organization. Please choose contact tracing, um, P-H-D-O-H. So please choose contact tracing, Pennsylvania Department of Health, this is again serve.pa.gov, serv.pa.gov. So uh, this is fantastic to join that civilian corps and get trained up to do to contract tracing. So glad this is finally here. So you can also, this is a, I'll have Megan please put this in the, the Facebook group. This email is a little bit cumbersome. So you can email ra-dh contact tracing ra-dh contact tracing at pa.gov in the email name of the group or organization you represent. So this is for organizations who want to do this. Um, 
then the contact information for who DOH should contact. The contact tracing leadership team will look at these um, and answer as quickly as possible. So individuals or groups can sign up to join the Civilian Coronavirus Corps and um, be able to help with contact tracing. So individuals go to scrv.pa.gov, groups, email, rh-dh, contact tracing at pa.gov. It's so exciting that they're ramping up contact tracing. I know you I know you guys know that I've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for this for a long time. So this is great news. Again, Governor Wolf announcing the Civilian Coronavirus Corps to hire and train Pennsylvanians to ramp up contact tracing. Contact tracing, just like testing, is an absolutely huge piece of how we're going to be able to live with COVID in these coming months and um, mitigate this virus and be able to live our lives uh, uh, in it again. So it's very good news. So if you have the capacity to, to do that, please um, email, email or go on that website. So today, um, our third emergency declaration runs out. We're extending the emergency declaration. This is this is the city's emergency declaration. This is gives me as mayor, us as a government, the ability to um, be more nimble and more flexible with with city operations. This is very different than the stay at home order. So please please don't misinterpret this. This is this gives this gives us the tools we need to do our jobs here at the city. This, these these emergency declarations. So. The emergency declaration, we're extending it through Monday, June 8th. That enables us to get through um, the primary on June 2nd, enables us to have flexibility as we, we sort through how, how we as a city will continue um, under these different phases. So that emergency declaration through June 8th, that is as of, you know, starts, starts today through June 8th. It's the fourth iteration of this. Uh, however, it is totally separate from the governor's stay-at-home order. Governor's stay-at-home order. I, I'm not sure if his press conference is at two o'clock today. Sometimes he's been doing them in the evenings. Um, hopefully, soon we'll have some news there on on what the what the the red phase um, might look like here in Lackawanna County. Those two things are completely separate. So, to reiterate, the extended stay-at-home order at the the governor's stay-at-home order goes right now red phase through June 4th. That could change. That could we could get out of red phase earlier. We're not sure. Our data points are are still not great to be able to get out, um, but it's flexible. I know they're looking. They're working really hard at Department of Health to look at these things, um, and we're you know in touch with them as well. So June fourth is still red phase. We're not in yellow phase yet. Uh, some of the counties in central Pennsylvania are in in yellow phase. I think that even southwest Pennsylvania is now in yellow phase. So. We're not there yet. We're still in red phase, um, and we're hoping, you know, hoping to continue to see all of our good work, all the, the what we've done together to come to come together as a community to help each other stay safe. Um, is it? It really has flattened the curve. It has brought things down to a, a point where hopefully we can start to to reopen. But we're we'll look to the governor for that. We're not going to. We in the city are not going to jump ahead of the governor on anything. But that doesn't mean we can't advocate. Uh, to the governor to um, to help us safely reopen and get our businesses back up and running. So as we've been doing, masks huge, hugely important. Um, the social distancing, all those precautions where we cough into our elbows, we wash our hands, we use sanitizer, all all those things uh, continue to be really important. Uh, so as I mentioned, election day, like I said, primary day is uh, Tuesday, June second. So you've got to register. If you're not registered to vote, register to vote by May 18th. That's only three days from now. So if you're not registered, if you know somebody who's not registered and wants to be, uh, we need everybody over 18 and over to, to be registered. Please register to vote by Monday. Uh, go to votespa.com to register. You can also um, sign up at votespa.com for your mail-in ballot application. Um, that will, you got to do it now, do it now, do it now, do it now, so that you can get that, that mail-in ballot by May 26th. Really important that we do that. We are hoping, we across the county, across the state, across the country, really hoping to have people do mail-in ballots so that we're not, after, you know, after all this hard work uh, to, to mitigate COVID, all going to the polls, and God forbid we have some sort of COVID outbreak as a result of voting, that would be heartbreaking in so many ways. So, 
please get that mail-in ballot so that we have as few people voting in person as possible on June 2nd. If you have questions, you can call the Lackawanna County Elections Office at 963-6737. Again, 963-6737. I know um, Director Mary Medellis is working really hard. Uh, there will be some updated uh, polling locations. There won't be as many. Um, for example, in the city of Scranton, um, our firehouses are closed to the public right now. We won't be using those as polling locations, so there'll be more information coming out there. Uh, so that doesn't mean you can't vote. It doesn't mean you shouldn't vote. It means please get your mail-in ballot, and we'll let you know all the changes in Scranton um, ahead of June 2nd um, so that you can go in person if you really, really need to. But we really, really please vote by mail. Go to votespa.com. Get that mail-in ballot application so that you don't have to worry about it on June 2nd. Um, I know you want to leave the house, we all want to leave the house, but um, you really don't want to be all seeing each other standing in line. We don't want, we don't want election day to become the, the day where we, uh, we, we ruin all of our good work here. Okay, and I, we have a um, little bit on unemployment. Uh, thanks to Senator Blake's office for helping us with this. So on the pandemic un unemployment assistance, that's for gig economy workers, uh, independent contractors. If you've completed an application and if you can log into your account and see it online, it has been submitted. You will not receive a PIN or an email confirmation. All correspondence will be on that PUA portal through the PUA messaging system. So check back often on that PUA system. You can send and receive messages and the issues are directly handled through that PUA portal. So we're still unclear on the processing times for PUA. So keep checking that portal, your application, that dashboard that you see on the portal, you will receive a message in your inbox on your determination. Errors and issue messages on the PUA system are automatically sent to the Department of Labor and Industry and they are notified to work on correcting them. If you receive a message that they need additional documentation, you can upload that directly on the portal even after you've submitted the application. Once someone gets to that claim to process it, they can resolve the issue messages. After filing your weekly certifications, you should generally be paid within seven days. The additional money from the Federal CARES Act, that's the $600, will come as a separate payment. Please do not call regular unemployment with PUA questions. You can email UCPUA, it's UCPUA at PA.gov, or you can send a message on the portal. Normal unemployment claims, um, sorry, norm, normal unemployment compensation employees do not have access to the PUA portal and they cannot resolve your issues. Currently, there is no PUA phone line. They are still working to set one up. Again, PUA, Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, is for the self-employed, but also for employees who do not qualify for regular unemployment compensation. Almost everyone who is not eligible for regular unemployment compensation is able to apply for PUA. No one can confirm eligibility before your application, so people, please, so the LNI, the labor industry, suggests you apply and will determine after you pro they process your application. So you do not have to apply for regular unemployment in order to apply for PUA. So you could go straight to PUA, especially if you know you're not eligible for unemployment traditional unemployment compensation. The PUA should automatically detect if you should be applying for a normal claim and they will redirect you. Normal unemployment uh, compensation will not and you will be stuck waiting. So um, you don't have to go through regular unemployment compensation and be denied first. You can go straight to PUA and um, that, that should help with your processing time. So check the eligibility of both programs so you're not waiting for an unemployment claim that you're not eligible for. So um, Megan has got that up. She'll continue to post that for you uh, and have it on our, our website and our Facebook, of course. So um, there's some new guidelines and some new help that, that you can see. Um, for normal unemployment compensation, there's a new guide with um, common issues. <laughs> For, for standard unemployment, after filing your initial claim, you should receive an email confirmation shortly after and a PIN in the, the mail in one to two weeks. If you've not received your PIN in three weeks, get, then go ahead and request a new PIN online. So last we were told, um, they're up to date on those mailings and that those should be going out on time. Okay, and 
Individuals can check claim status online after they receive your, their PIN. If someone has an error, um, the best days to call are Thursdays and Fridays. So that's interesting. If you really cannot get through, you can contact um, a legislator's office and the legislator's office can send a request down. So again, thanks to Senator Blake for that information. Sounds like you can check in with Senator Blake's office um, or I say Representative Mullins or Representative Flynn's office um, for help on that. Okay, great. Okay, so we'll check in here on the food access. Friends of the Poor is doing another um, drive through next Wednesday, May 20th. It's going to be in Peckville. So it's Wednesday, May 20th, 2.30 to 5.30 at 110 Willow Street in Peckville. It's drive through only, again, Wednesday, May 20th, 2.30 to 5.30 at 110 Willow Street in Peckville. And I'm really excited. Thank you, Scranton Police Department, for doing another uh, free pasta drive through this weekend. So this Sunday, May 17th. Starts at 1 p.m. at 401 Railroad Ave. So 4 p.m. Railroad Ave, 4 p.m. at 401 Railroad Ave, 1 p.m. until the food runs out. Call 558-8304 to place a delivery request if you cannot get to the drive-through. So Scranton PD, thank you. Free pasta dinner, 1 o'clock until the food runs out on Sunday. 401 Railroad Ave, 558-8304 to place a delivery request. So let me get to questions. Um, let's see, go through the Facebook and turn back to you guys here. Um, check the phone to see, make sure I don't hang up on you on this folks on the phone. <laughs> okay. So let's see what we got here. Um, yep. Yeah, so Cheryl's got a, a good point. So part of the idea here is kind of like a holiday bazaar, uh, but in the summertime where you have the streets closed so that you can have commerce there. Uh, we have to continue to keep our distance from each other. Um, so it won't quite like be as crowded as a holiday bazaar, but yeah, exactly that type of feeling, that type of um, opportunity for our, our retail to um, have their their goods out and then we also we don't want it to just be limited to downtown businesses we want to make sure that businesses from other places in the city could could potentially either come do something downtown and or have their sidewalks be open for sidewalk sales too so i think it could be really fun and we still got to i forget uh which one of you it was that talked about the garage sale we've got to we've got to get an answer on that that's part of uh, looking at all of this okay um Let's see. Um, nope. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, Tracy, I agree with you on the uh, nursing home piece. The Department of Health said that they would be releasing more detailed information about nursing homes and COVID cases there. Um, they've been kind of saying each week that it would be this week. Um, I'm not sure if it's happening this week today. It, I agree with you. We really, really need that information. Um, we don't. It's not. In, it's not to lay blame or point the finger at any 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 of the homes. Um, they are doing what they can, and they've done a good job. And it's been really, really hard in those homes. But it is really important to your point that we know how much how many of our cases are community spread and how many are related to these these. Um, elder care and assisted living places. Okay. So Glenda is asking about would there be another lockdown in, in months to come? That's, and that's what we all have to try to think through, right? Is will there be talking about second waves and third waves, talking about living with COVID? I think that's an important point to keep in mind that this isn't probably going away. What we need to do is figure out, like we talked about with Josh, how do we, how do we open these businesses and go back to a new normal in a way that enables social distancing, that mitigates a, a, a big outbreak and a, and a quick spread of this um, again. So, and, and not even again. I mean, we really have done a good job. We haven't had, we haven't seen because we've been, been closed. We haven't seen a, a huge outbreak and the hospitals haven't been overwhelmed. We have to continue to keep it so the hospitals aren't overwhelmed, 
but also figure out how to reopen safely. So it's a real challenge. I said a few weeks ago that I thought the hardest part was coming. And I, I, I feel that way. I feel that's what I'm, I'm living day to day now, that the shock of the decisions, the shock of the situation from two months ago was stark, but it also was a black and white. We have to do this for public health. Now we're saying, okay, well, the shutdown work, but we've got to open our society back up. How do we do this safely? How do we live with this virus? This is a much harder problem. Um, it's really easy to shut things down. How to reopen them is actually much harder. So we have to uh, continue to talk and with our task force, continue to talk with all the hospitals, with all of our medical experts, um, talk with the governor's office and, and not get over, not get ahead of them. Um, and, and what they're recommending, but we've, we've got to figure this out and don't know, we want, we want to make sure that we don't have to do another lockdown um, and, and a shutdown, but I can't make any promises. Not, nobody out there can make promises. I'll tell you that I know that the Pennsylvania is, I know that I here in the city, we're tracking and that with the county and everybody together, tracking what happens when you do open things back up. So some of these states like Georgia, like Oklahoma, who have said, you know, okay, we're not going to do this anymore. What does it look like there? Um, there's going to be a couple week lag. We know this virus is, is in part so awful because the symptoms don't come right away. The incubation period is long and some people have it without having symptoms. So it really is kind of the worst case scenario for being able to track these trends. So we need to look at some of these other places we saw in Singapore, they opened up, then they shut back down. We don't, we don't want to lift that lid and then shut it right back down. That would be hard I mean, even, you know, maybe even harder on our businesses, right? So it, it's the challenges, the challenges here, it's before us and it's not going to be perfect. I know that not, not everything makes a lot of sense. We're trying to do as much as we can to advocate for uh, the things that, that folks out there are, are looking for. How can we, how can we open up in a way that, that makes the most sense? Uh, okay. So it does look like we got an update. Um, yeah, I, Lackawanna County, I, I don't think we'll be opening um, in the next week. Um, and, you know, I don't know that June 4th will s continue to be that day, but it, it won't be in the next week. Uh, let's see. Thank you for voting, Glenda. Um, <laughs> I like when you say hi to each other, guys. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, so, Pamela, the insurance for employees on furlough is through Mark, uh, May 31st. So after May 31st, those uh, employees that are still furloughed will, will um, need to utilize COBRA or um, find insurance with a, a, a partner or spouse, or um, I think they can go also onto the marketplace. Okay. So, okay. So Pamela's asking about the garbage bill. So the garbage bill, think it's being mailed Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, or you're seeing it in your inbox, in your mailbox is Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. I don't have, I, I don't, I don't keep up on the exact day. So I'm sorry. I it either is getting mailed on Tuesday, Wednesday of next week, or you'll see it next Tuesday or Wednesday. The penalty, excuse me, the discount period is extended through June 15th. So if you get it in by June 15th, then you will be able to get that discount. So we extended it. The, they're late than later than usual because we wanted to get it right. We wanted to extend that period for you till June fifteenth, and then we the penalty period isn't until September thirtieth. So until June fifteenth, you get the discount. June fifteenth to September thirtieth is the the standard rate, no no penalty. So those those will be there soon, and it's all um, there's no more cash. It's only check or credit card or money order is fine. Um, and the today there they should should the link should go up live today or Monday at the latest for paying online. So we're really encouraging people to pay online, um, or of course send in your your checks. We are not going to be open at the at City Hall for at least a few more weeks, if not longer. So you won't be able to come in in person for a few more weeks. I would say before the discount period, you've got to please pay online or mail your check in so it's it's a, it's a different system i think it's good i think it's a more modern system and, and certainly in covid we, we can't be having people come uh come to pay pay at city hall so the check or online uh let's see um
also um, call a num oh calling a number for payment. Um, let me check in with the Treasury Department about that, Pamela. Um, we certainly you can certainly call us with questions. I'm not sure if we're taking payments over the phone, however. So um, Megan, if you could pop in the Treasury phone number for Pamela, or at least reply to her after we're done, that would be great. Um, Tamara, so with the sidewalk sales, what we're looking at, we're, we're trying to figure that program out. So we're not gonna charge fees. We're not gonna charge businesses fees to, to for permits. Um, in terms of um, us knowing that you're doing it, we, we still want to know that you're doing it. So we're gonna get the details of that. Um, that out there, but we're not going to be charging businesses for um, trying to make a living in this in this new COVID-19 world. So uh, we, we will have a system where we'll want to have, we'll, we, will, we will all know who's doing it so that we know that, you know, that way it's helpful for us to see who's taking advantage of the program um, and be able to, to celebrate that. Um, but we won't be charging fees for that. So we'll get that, we'll get those details rolled out as soon as we can, and especially wanting to get those, some of those street closures up and running as soon as possible so we can um, get, get that going. It might not, the street closures, even as planned, we might not be able to do it until yellow phase. We have to assess that, but um, we're very, we're excited about that. We're really, really excited about that. And Betty's asking about parks. Par our parks are open, all Scranton parks. We never closed the parks. What we have done is, is closed off the equipment so that we don't have kids going on all that equipment um, and, and passing those, those, those germs. And we're still asking people to please not play team sports. We're still in that red phase and we've just got to, we've got to, really not do the team sports right now. Um, and unfortunately, um, the pools are, are closed. Uh, we don't plan to open them up. If, if, for, if somehow we can open a couple of them up at some point this summer, we'll try, but we wanna set expectations and, and say that at this point, when we're looking at this, it's hard for us to see how we open the pools up. So it's, I realize it's really, really disappointing. I'm personally disappointed by it. We're, we're sorry about that. It's, um, another one of these things that we're, we're just going to have to live with right now. And, and we're, we're trying to be flexible. We're not ruling out um, a, a, a positive change in the right direction later in the summer, but we, we want to set expectations now that um, at this point we don't see the pools being able to open. So I don't see any more, uh, any more questions. So um, you guys are probably, um, uh, probably wanting to uh, get out and maybe take a walk with your mask on and enjoy the day. Um, if you can do, if you can order takeout from one of our, our great restaurants um, this weekend, that'll be terrific. Uh, I thought it was a cool idea to see if your neighbors want to go in with you and could do a bulk order. That way our restaurants don't have to deliver as much. That saves them time and money on staffing that saves gas. Um, and uh, as long as you know, you're all taking those precautions, wearing those masks and um, able to, to drop some food off at the door of your neighbor. That's a cool thing. Um, and I'll, I'll end though with, if you are having trouble getting the food on the table for your family, uh, there's so many resources out there. Friends of the Poor, the Food Bank, Salvation Army, Meals on Wheels, Keystone Mission. There's a lot of resources there. Um, the quickest way, if you're on the phone here, dial 211. They can help you uh, get to some of those, those resources. And um, there is help. There's so much help out there. Our community is so tremendous in helping each other. So if you need help, don't feel bad. Raise your hand, make that call to 211, go to our website, go to our Facebook. That information's there. Meals on Wheels, Friends of the Poor Food Bank, Salvation Army, Keystone Mission. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but that those five, if you get in touch with any of those five, they can get you what you need through some through some service. And um, if you're struggling um, with mental health, um, that's another piece. You can text TALK, T-A-L-K, to 741741. Um, there's other, the crisis hotlines also are on our, our Facebook page, our website, and there's, there's lots, um, there are lots of avenues to, um, lots of avenues to get help and never, never be ashamed to get help. So um, we will, okay, and sorry, one more question I wanted to answer um, on the city taxes. So Pamela, your income taxes are not due until July 15th. So federal, state, city, income taxes are not due until July 15th. So don't worry about June 15th for that. June 15th is the final day of the discount period for the garbage, the refuse fee. 
taxes, city taxes, July 15th, that's the same with federal and state. So those are, are two separate things. Um, and we'll we'll get um, get an answer to, I think it was Pamela's question about calling over, making a payment over the phone. Um, I don't have the answer for that. I think again, the, e the very much, the, the easiest thing is to send a check or go online. If you haven't paid a bill online before, um, uh, happy to, you know, I'm sure somebody in your life would be happy to help you or um, we can try to answer those questions for you. And I don't have, I don't see the treasury number, but if you have questions, try 348-4101. That's our main line, um, 348-4101 or email scranton311 at scrantonpa.gov. So uh, thanks everybody um, for turning tuning in as you do. Um, this is a community conversation. I, um, it really makes me feel good every time that we do this. I get good ideas from you. Um, we we love the comments. We love the the interaction. This is a small a small community in a really good way. But like we always say, we punch above our weight in terms of our voice. Uh, I think out in the world. So keep those ideas coming. Have a good weekend. Stay safe um, and stay uh, stay safe uh, and healthy for your families. Thanks. <laughs>